Today I'm going to show you how to prototype a multiple sticky header effect in Flinto for Mac's Behavior Designer. This is an effect where you scroll through a list of content with multiple headers and each header sticks to the top of the screen and then as the next header scrolls up it pushes the last one off and it sticks to the top of the screen. This is a intermediate behavior designer technique, requires a small amount of arithmetic, um, but I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm posting videos every weekday now, so if you have a tutorial or some other topic that you'd like me to cover in a video, definitely leave a comment. You know, I need ideas, so if you leave a comment, there's a pretty good chance that I make a video based on your suggestion. All right, enjoy the tutorial. Okay, I've got this screen here, and it has three content blocks in it, three blocks of text, and it scrolls. So I'm gonna open up the preview, and we can scroll through this. So I've put all that text inside of a scroll group to make it scroll, and then I've got three headers, which I've hidden, and now I'll show them. They're not inside of the scroll group. So they stay fixed, they don't scroll. And that's my starting point to create this multiple sticky header effect. So I've put a group around all this stuff, the headers and the scrolling content, and I'm gonna create a behavior. It's important to know a few numbers when you set this up. First, the height of each header is 50 points. The space between the headers is 300 points. So I'm gonna create a new state, and in this next state, the second header is gonna to be touching the bottom of the first header. And throughout all of this, I'm not going to need to adjust the scrolling content because that's gonna be adjusted by the user scrolling that. So you don't have to worry about it. Even though it looks the same in each state, it'll be changing based on what the user is doing. All right, so from the initial state to get to the new state, you're gonna get there based on your scroll position. So I'll select the scrolling content group, create a link and target the new state. Now the second header, I want it to move up to the position of the first header at a constant rate along with the scrolling. And that means the distance it moves should be equivalent to the distance that is scrolled. So I'm gonna set my scroll range to 300. And I can see here in the inspector exactly the uh, end position of that scroll range. Okay, now let me just test this. You can see that the second header is now moving as if it's part of the scroll group because its Y position is changing at the same rate as the scrolling is happening. And then it reaches that new state and it's locked right there underneath the uh, first one. And you can see there's a missing header here. The third one should be coming up as well. And it's gonna move up at the same distance, same rate. That means we want it to go up uh, 300 points. So I just go here to Y position, it's currently 700. And I'm just gonna type minus 300 and then tab out of that and that moves it up 300 points. Okay, back to the preview, let me reset this, and now both the headers move up together. All right, but that third one, it gets stuck there. So we'll address that in a moment, but let's first address the first and second header. You know, the second one hits there, but we want it to then push the first one off. So I'm gonna make yet another state where the first one is pushed off. So I'll make that new state, and I'm gonna drag both of these headers up. And so now the second one is hitting the top of the screen and the first one is just off the top of the screen. So that's out of view now. This should move up the same distance. These headers are 50 points tall. So this should move up uh, 50 points. So I'll just type in minus 50 to the Y position of the third header. All right, and now we need a way to get from this state to my third state. And again, that's gonna be with a scroll gesture. So I'll select the scroll group click create link, target the newest state, and we have to figure out this range. And we want this range to start right at the end of the previous range. So let's go back here uh, to the initial state and let's look at the end position. It ends at 300. So on this one, I want it to start at 300 because it should start right after the other one ends. So I'll put start 300 and the end is gonna be 350 because it's gonna be 50 points past the end of the last range. That's gonna cover this uh, 50, that's gonna cover this 50 point movement of the second and the third header as they push the first one off. So right when we hit here, we're now going from the second state to the third state, and there's that 50 points right there. And then the second header comes to rest. And there's no uh, behavior happening at this point, so we have to make yet another one that causes the third header to come up to the second one. 
And now we're just repeating the process. So from here, a new state where the third one is right up against the bottom of the second one. How do we get there? With a scroll gesture. So I'll create that link, target the new state. And where does this one start? Well, the last one ended at 350. So this one should start at 350. And it's gonna go 300. So let's type in 300 plus 350. And that gives us 650. So this is the next range that's gonna cover the distance between the third header and the second header. That should take us to this state. So let's try that in the preview. Scroll all the way down to reset it. And there's that. And then the third one is moving up. So this is our newest, um, this is our newest state change. The third one is moving up and it should stop right there and just be fixed in place. So, we, so I'm gonna make one more state where the third one is at the top of the screen and the second one is pushed off the top. So let's make that state. I'm just gonna move these all up by 50 points. Let me just make sure I did that right. I'll use the snapping to get them exactly into place. And so to get here, we're gonna make another scroll gesture going to the last state. And where does this one start? Well, we look at the last one where it left off, which was 650. So this one will start at 650. And how far are we scrolling? We're scrolling the height of one header, which is 50. So that equals 700 to get to the end position. And let's try it. There we go, now it works. Now you may notice there's one remaining issue, which is when I scroll backwards, when I go past the top, the headers don't move. We can address that with a separate behavior. So from the initial state, we wanna set it up so that when you scroll in the other direction, it has a uh, different state that it goes to, but we can't do that within this behavior because you can only have one scroll gesture per scroll group. But the way to do it is to exit out of the behavior designer and add an additional behavior to this same sticky headers group. So I'm gonna create a new behavior. We'll have two behaviors on the same group. And in this one, I'll make a new state. And this is for when we go down in the other direction. So I'm just gonna move all the headers down and I can move them really any amount that I'd like, but I'm just gonna move them way down to make sure that I've covered the case where you scroll all the way past the bottom. And let's see, this was at zero and now it's at 667. So to make sure that these move at a constant rate with the scrolling, I'm gonna set up my scroll link from the initial state to the new state to start at zero and end at negative 667 because we're scrolling in this direction now upwards and making it 667 means that it's the same, same amount of scroll as the, as the headers need to move down. So they should move at a constant rate. Let's try it. So there we go. Now we can scroll in the other direction and the headers will move along and we can scroll up and they'll fix into place one by one as you scroll through. And that's how you can do a multiple sticky header behavior. All right, I hope you liked that behavior designer tutorial. Be sure to check out the other ones on our channel. There's nearly a hundred videos now and I'm posting new ones every weekday. So again, please leave a comment with any ideas for tutorials that you would like to see. If you'd like me to personally explain to you how to do something in Flinto for Mac, there's a pretty good chance I'll do it because like I said, I need ideas because I'm trying to post a lot of videos now.